going to make a mobile storage unit with four or five drawers in it, um, mainly to put the uh, sander on that I made, but um, I also wanted to store stuff. Um, but I'm going to make it the same height as this bench, so I can use it as a, an eight feet table, so I can cut lanyard sheets on. Because at the moment, I'm using my table saw, um, which really doesn't work. <laughs> Taking a measurement now of the overall height of um, the unit that I want to cut off, or the piece of sheet that I want to cut off, I've deducted the distance between the edge of the saw to the blade and set the straight edge back that amount so I can cut off a nice clean straight edge. And now I'm going to cut this in half uh, to give me the two side panels of the case. both sides and the top and bottom of the case now. Now in this project I'm going to introduce uh, some other tools now and that is a hand um, operated router and a router table, small router table uh, because the large pieces here are too big to fit in my CNC router so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around the outside, or make rabbits, rabbit joints around the outside of the, the sides. And um, I'm also going to run uh, a dado uh, where I'm going to put the, the drawers into. Whenever I'm making a rabbit joint, um, what I normally do is set my table saw to the, the right depth of the of the uh, rabbit joint and the fence at the, the right distance, 19 mil, and I run a cut first with my table saw, then I put the rotor in because I believe it just makes a, an easier life for the, for the rotor. When doing this sort of cut where the blade does not protrude all the way through the material, the way in which you need to do it you need to hold the material flat down, put some pressure down on the material, but not directly, don't put your hand directly over the blade, you're sort of off to one side, and you've got to squeeze the material in towards the, the fence and push it through where it comes on. Okay, so I've got uh, my rotor table fit, uh, set up now. Uh, the rotor is the rotor tool is um, protruding through um, three eighths of an inch, which is approximately nine millimeters, and uh, of course it's three quarter of an inch um, of the tool showing, which is about just a shade. In actual fact, it's probably been a couple of years since I use this um, rotor table and I've actually forgotten what an unpleasant experience it really is. Um, so what I've decided to do, uh, because it's, it's very limited um, because of its size, um, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to dismantle this unit and build a proper dedicated router table and uh, instead of buying um, an insert plate is I'll use the whole of this nice aluminium machined flat bed and place it into or sink it into uh, the top of the new router table. So um, I'll probably make that a priority job over the next <laughs> So 
So there we have a rabbit joint uh, on both uh, side panels of the case um, ready. So now I'm just going to do the, the dados running through the panel this way. When put in a, a, a cutter, uh, especially a, a three quarter inch cutter like this one that I'm going to use to cut my dado, um, of course it's got a quarter inch shank. So what I do to preserve the tool, because um, they have a habit of snapping off, you put the tool right in as far as you can and then do it up. And there's less likelihood of the tool Tasmanian oak into uh, two so I can cut up into runners for the wood. I've cut all my draw runners now and I'll be putting a bead of carpenter's glue into the data and uh, fitting these in and to hold them in place while the glue goes off I'll be putting some um, one inch pin nails in. Four drawers. Three drawers at 200 and one smaller drawer at the, at the top. Um, that's sufficient for what I, I require. So um, some of you may recognize the design of uh, this uh, cupboard. Um, if you have a look at um, Steve Ramsey's uh, Woodwork for Mere Mortals which I recommend any of you guys are going to have a look at because it's a really good site. Um, 
This has uh, been inspired by his version. I've cut a 19mm plywood top and I'm leaving it flush all the way around and then I'm going to edge it with some 19mm oak. Tie the two side walls in to stop the sides from bowing out. I've cut a piece of 19mm by 3 quarters of an inch uh, by three inches. Now I'm going to drill it and screw it in from each I've side. I've clamped it in place so it's uh, rigidly mounted now and it's not going to move anywhere while I drill it. My <laughs> four drawers uh, are actually three different sizes. Um, the top drawer, which is the smallest drawer, is five and a half inches deep. Uh, the two central drawers are seven inches deep. And the bottom drawer is eight and a half inches. I'm going to be making the drawer cases, right, or the drawer sides and back and front, uh, from 19 mil Tasmanian pine. It's beautiful stuff. Um, and the bottoms I'm going to be making out of uh, 7 sixteenths um, ply. A couple of the pads needed now to make the drawers. This stack here I need now to make some rabbits on the ends so I can joint the drawer up. It's probably a good idea um, to check your, your mitre gauge um, for squareness and in doing so when you get this square to the actual tool uh, you can then get your fence square to the mitre gauge and you know everything then is completely 90 degrees. So what I do, um, I take it that, for I take it for granted that is that these are machined exactly square. So from that, you can, if you notice, this is on 90 degrees now, yet it's out in relation to the the actual ways on the top here so bit fiddly yeah, that's pretty well spot on there okay there you go now that's spot on so from that then you can determine your fence to be square. Okay. Bit fiddly, but now I know that fence is exactly square to my mind. dado, uh, 7 millimeter dado, around the bottom of all of these to um, allow the fitment of the, the bottom draw panel. The way I'm going to cut the dado, as it's quite a very small narrow dado, uh, I'm going to do that with the saw blade of my table saw and I'll take two cuts of it. <laughs> 